How cool is this? It is spectacular. Place you always wanted to see, sir? It is. Knocked it off the bucket list right now. <laughs> That's fine. Track movers. Can we get this tracking? Seven meters. There it goes. I've recorded everybody's weights and heights, so I'm going to create a kind of average pulling group. And using that, I'll be able to estimate the force that was exerted on the stone. And from that, I'll be, estimate, be able to estimate the kind of friction that was created and the, really the efficiency of this method. And then I'll just use those speeds to kind of create average speeds and data. And then I'll take all that data, bring it into my modeling, and uh, that's going to kind of uh, input into my doctoral project, which is looking at revising the amount of time that we think the creation of places like Stonehenge took. It's the smaller stones that we're particularly interested in at the moment because although they only weighed a couple of tons, if that, they came from almost 200 miles away on the west coast of Wales. And we're, we're interested in knowing why did they do that as well as how did they do that. was very well supplied. They were bringing in animals from all over Britain to barbecue and eat, so they were living really well. These weren't half-starved slaves. These were actually people who'd come as much for the feasting and drinking as any other part of it. They formed the first stage of Stonehenge, so a circle with just small stones, and it's why they moved them all the way from Wales, which is at the heart of the mystery. What we're investigating is whether it was actually a special site in Wales that was dismantled and brought to Stonehenge. And what we do know is when they got them to Stonehenge, it was a burial place. It's actually the largest graveyard in Britain in the whole of the third millennium BC, 5,000 years ago. 